walk through Exodus chapter 3, the story of God speaking to Moses through, through the burning bush. And so if you, if you got your Bible, you can go ahead and open up to Exodus chapter 3. If, uh, if you're taking notes, go ahead and, and grab your journal and open it up. We titled today's message, How to Hear from God. How to Hear from God. Can you say it out loud with me? How to Hear from God. I don't know if you've ever been at a point in your life that you needed a fresh word from God or you needed direction from God or you needed to hear from God. If you've ever like gone to a moment of praying going, God, I, 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 God, could you tell me what to do? I, I don't know if you've ever been at a point and maybe you had opportunities or, or, or different roads or different doors and you're like praying for wisdom, God, what should I do here? And a lot of times people, one of the, one of the questions I get the most as a pastor is, what does God want me to do in blank, fill in the blank, life situation, right? What, I wish I knew what God wanted me to do. So what I want to walk through today is how do we hear from God? Because I believe hearing from God is one of the spiritual disciplines that God wants to develop in our lives as we grow to be lifelong followers. If you're here in the year 2022, that was our theme for the year, how to become lifelong followers, a disciple of Jesus well, a disciple of Jesus is someone who hears and does what God says. So how do we hear from God? And I think everybody wants to hear from God, not just Christians, Christians and non-believers. I think everybody wants to somehow hear from God. But for many of us, it's this kind of weird, mystical thing. Like, how do you, how do you hear from God, from a being that you can't see or, or be able to look eyeball to eyeball to? How do we hear from God? God, but I truly believe and kind of foundational to my thought process for today, hearing from God is critical for our spiritual development. Hearing from God is critical for our spiritual development. So today, as we learn from Moses' experience with the burning bush and how he heard from God, I believe it's going to give us some truths that we can apply to our lives so that we can hear from God also, so that we can hear from God also. So in Exodus chapter 3, um, this is perhaps one of the most well-known stories when God spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. Maybe you've seen it from the 1956 movie, uh, The Ten Commandments. Do we have that picture? Anybody seen that movie? It like comes out at, at Easter time every year. Like they play the Ten Commandments on major networks. And so that's Moses uh, hearing from God, speaking from the burning bush, from the 1956 classic, The Ten Commandments. Some of you are a little younger than 1956, and so you watched it this way in the animated movie, The Prince of Egypt. And so maybe that was you and, and how you depicted in your mind Moses kind of talking to God out of the burning bush. But we're going to look at the original today. So the original is found in Exodus chapter 3, and it says it this way. Now, when Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness, and he came to Horeb, comma, the mountain of God. If you have your Bible, you can circle that or underline that, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed." And that's always interesting to me, kind of like those pictures we just looked at. The, the, the bush was on fire. If you've ever been around um, a bonfire, at my house in our backyard, we have like this little fire ring, right? And we, we, like, to, we like to make a little bonfire. Um, uh, we like to sit around it and melt some marshmallows and have some s'mores as we enjoy a little backyard bonfire. And it's always fun to watch the flames kind of jump up into the night sky and you hear the cracking and the popping of the fire and the, you see the, the, the green leaves maybe kind of withered up and, and burn up and disappear. Well, that wasn't happening in this fire that we're reading about. There, there might have been some cracking and some popping. There might have been some flames that were jumping up into the night sky, but the leaves weren't being consumed. They weren't being withered up and they weren't catching on fire. They, they weren't burning away and it caught Moses' attention. In fact, it says in verse three, because it caught his attention, and Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this passage of scripture. 
where you so vividly illustrate a conversation that you have with Moses. And I, I pray that out of this story, that's maybe a very familiar story for the majority of us here, that you would speak perhaps a new truth or a deeper truth about how we can learn to hear from God. And not just in crisis moments, but in every day that you want to call out to us and speak to us. So give us ears to hear, a mind to understand your will. Help us, Lord, to lean into you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So here's what we're going to do. If you're just now jumping in with us today, I'll summarize real quickly. We had major uh, computer problems with our presentation software before our first service, and so we went through our service order backwards. We did preaching first and worship second, and it worked so good because uh, it prepared us to receive what God wanted to seal in our hearts. And, uh, and we got a lot of the computer problems fixed, not all of them, but most of them, but it worked so well last service. We're gonna just kind of do that again, and I know some of you already heard me say that, but for those of you that came in, just jump in, prepare your hearts, we're gonna study God's word, and then we're gonna respond to God's word in an act of worship in just a little bit. So since we're doing our service order backwards, uh, we're, looking, we're going to look at the story we just read in backwards order. It, I think sometimes when we look at these familiar stories in just a linear manner, uh, they're very known to us and we, we overlook some deep spiritual truths. So we're gonna slow down and we're gonna look at a very familiar story in backwards order stopping to look at three key elements along this story. And maybe while we slow down to look at it backwards, maybe there's going to be a truth that's been there the whole time. We just didn't really pause long enough to see it that will just leap off the pages today. So I'm just going to walk through the story with some key elements in backwards order, right? So the first thing or the last thing that we see, the last thing Moses did was he said, here I am, All right? So now that we know where Moses is at, here I am, how did he get there? And that's what we're going to look at today. So Moses says, here I am, in response to God's call. It was an acknowledgement that he was hearing God, an announcement that he was ready to listen. Like, yeah, here I am. The question today for you and for me to process is, are we ready to listen? Are we where Moses was at? Okay, God, I'm ready. Here I am. But before he said, here I am, before he was ready to listen, as you kind of go backwards through the key elements of the story, Moses paid attention to what was going on. He, he paid attention to what was going on. It, it says in, in, in verse 3, Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, right? He paid attention to what was going on. What was going on? God got his attention, not with words, but with a miraculous sign, with a, a bush that was on fire, but wasn't being consumed. It says in verse four, and when the Lord saw that, he turned aside to see God call to him from the bush. So, so we see Moses was ready to hear from God. And in order for him to be ready to hear from God, go backwards, he had to turn and pay attention to what God was doing. So the question is, how do we become aware and how do we pay attention to the things that God is doing? How, how, how does God get our attention? And that's a great question for all of us is, how does God get my attention and how does God get your attention? Or, or maybe another way you could phrase that question is, what are things that keep us from paying attention to God? What are some things that keep us from paying attention to God? Maybe it's our work. Maybe because we work so much, we, we don't pay attention to God. Or, or, or maybe it's po politics, or maybe it's our hobbies, or maybe it's our sins. But what are the things that perhaps keep us from paying attention to God? Could the Holy Spirit be speaking to us about some of those distractions in our life today? So we see that Moses was ready to hear from God. We see that Moses turned away from distractions and paid attention to what God was doing. And the third thing that we see, you got to go all the way back to verse 1. So you see we're going backwards order here. You go all the way back to verse 1. And it says that Moses went to the far side of the mountain away from people and towards God. Right? Moses went to the far side of the mountain away from people and towards God. In verse 1, it says he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and he came to Horeb to the mountain of God. See, Moses didn't go to the middle of nowhere. Moses went to the far side of nowhere. Right? He, he, surely there are probably pastures closer to home. 
Surely there are probably some feeding grounds closer to home, but he didn't go to what was easy or convenient. He went away from people and he went to the far side of the mountain. He went to the mountain of God. And so part of the idea there is uh, sometimes we have to get away from those distractions that we have in our lives in order to hear from God. <laughs> so what are some of those distractions? What, what are distractions? Well, I mean, we could say, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. Anybody ever been busy before? I'm busy. I'm busy with school. I'm busy with work. I'm busy with this video game trying to level up. I'm busy. God, I'm just too busy. Sometimes being too busy keeps us away from hearing the voice of God. God, I'm too busy. Maybe another distraction is I have errands to do. Right? I got to pay these bills. I got to run around and do this. I got to mow the yard. I got to get all of these things done. And the urgency of the errand sometimes becomes the distraction from us being able to pause to hear the voice of God. Or we say things like, well, I just stayed up too late. I, I want to sleep in. I and that becomes a distraction. Or, or we say, if I don't get this done, it just won't get done. Or my family needs me right now. Or, or my business is growing and I really need to pay attention to my business right now. And all those things are important. Your business is important. Your family is important. Getting your errands done, your yard mode, your bills paid. All of those things are important. I'm not saying they're not important. I'm saying sometimes the urgency crowds out the priority of listening, hearing, and spending time with God. Here's the principle. You can't take care of others if you don't allow God to take care of you. Right? Well, my family needs me, so sometimes we're so busy focused on our family that we don't let take time to focus with God. Well, if you, I want to lead them well, I, I need to hear from God well. Or our business. If I want to do my business well, I need to be sure I'm taking care of my spiritual walk with God first. Because throughout the rest of Moses' life, I'm telling you, this encounter with God was transformational for Moses. Throughout the rest of his life, you can watch Moses get away from the crowd of people with all of their demands and all of their expectations and all of their wants and all of their cries for attention and for needs. And you can find Moses getting away all by himself, getting alone with God, getting direction, hearing from God, replenishing his soul and his spirit with God in order to come back to lead them well. And it wasn't just a Moses thing. You can read through the gospels in the New Testament and you can see time and time after time where Jesus gets away from the crowd, like Jesus, God's son, gets away from the crowd, the demands, the expectations, the wants of people, and he gets alone with God for a time of talking with God and replenishing his spirit in order to come back and lead well. So if Moses learned that and Jesus modeled that, surely you and I could begin to take thought that that's kind of an important priority. One of those spiritual disciplines that we need to develop in our life is our ability to spend time and hear from God in order to live life well. Three simple steps. I believe God's eager to talk to you and to me. I believe God is eager to speak to us. I, I, I believe even today, God is on the edge of his seat waiting to speak to us. What if? What if God's the one that actually set up our computer out of all the weeks to be this the week that it didn't work? So that all of a sudden, he got our attention by just switching the order of our service on us because sometimes we're so linear. I, I, what, what if God just like, hey, what if, what if I caught your attention by just completely blowing your agenda and your plan out so that you can get on my plan and that I can speak to you and that you'll be ready to hear from me? So I'm asking you, church, today, would you just lean in to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today. How do, we, how do we hear from God? Let's go through Moses one more time. Step one, get away from distractions. Step one, get away from distractions. Moses got away from people and from distractions by going to the far side of the wilderness to the mountain of God. Where do you go for quiet and solitude? Where do you go to get away from distractions? Maybe, maybe it's a walk around the neighborhood or maybe it's your recliner in your living room in the pre-dawn hours of the morning. Where do you go to get away from distractions? Where do you feel close to God? I'll just, I wanna share just a practical thought if I can. I know a lot of us read the Bible on our phones, 
right? And, and I know a lot, a, a lot of us read the Bible on our phones, and some of you are signed up to reading plans, and I'm listed as a friend, and I get notices when you're reading. I'm, I'm cheering you on, going, way to go. But have you ever noticed that sometimes reading the Bible on your phone is also full of distractions? There's these things called push, and in fact, I'm getting them right now from, from a flight I'm supposed to check on, but we get push notifications, right? So there you are trying to, trying to read the Bible and you get the push notification. Uh, it says, somebody liked your post. You're like, huh. Well, if Mary liked my post, I wonder how many other people liked my post. And you click on it to see and you realize Mary and one other person, you don't really know who they are, but your Facebook friends with them liked your post. And you're like, oh, oh, only two people liked my post. Your heart sinks a little bit. You're like, well, if only two people liked my post, I wonder how many people liked Pastor Renee's post. So you go and you search her, and you're like, oh, man, she's got 52 people liked her post. I'm feeling like a failure now. And then you just sit there, and you're starting to scroll, and then you, you click on a sales ad because it had some shoes you just can't live with up, but then you realize they're too expensive, and you go back. And before you know it, like the alarm's going off. you got to get kids up and off to school. And what started out as, I'm going to read the Bible today, ended up being full of distractions because of a push notification that popped up on your phone. I'm not speaking bad against phones, and I'm not against phones, and I'm not against you reading your Bible on your phone. Do it. Read the Bible. I'm saying is, how do we turn distractions off? How do we not let distractions rob us from the moment that we wanted to spend with God? Because I've been there, and surely you've been there, where you start with good intentions, but you go down a rabbit hole of distractions. How do we, how do we intentionally spend time with God where we can turn off the distractions. That's the very first principle that we see in Moses' encounter and hearing from God was he was able to get away from distractions. So that's just my question to you today is how do you get away from distractions? And if you don't, if you habitually get distracted from spending time with God, then can I ask you to just sit down and think, how do I turn distractions off? If you need some ideas, I'll give you some ideas. How do we turn distractions off so we can hear from God. Second thing was Moses paid attention to what was going on. He, he paid attention to what God was doing. When he saw that a bush was burning but it wasn't being consumed, that was intriguing enough that he thought, I wanna go see what that's all about. He got closer, he paid attention to what are, going, what are things that are going on in your life or circumstances in your life that are capturing your attention that you're saying, huh, surely that's probably God. I, What's God doing? And you're getting a little closer there. What has God been doing in your life that you need to pay closer attention to? And I think that that question is so varied because it's so unique to each of us. My life is different than your life and my situations are different than your situations. But surely in all of our situations, there's something that God is involved in and maybe in the middle of those circumstances or situations we're in, we can ask the question, God, what are you doing? Because God's actively at work in our lives. I think one of the ways God often gets our attention is maybe when things kind of turn sour or go bad. There's those moments where, where God gets our attention. Um, uh, if you've been with me for any length of time, you've probably heard me say something like this. It's, it's in those moments where life just doesn't turn out the way that we want it to, that we have to learn to change our questions from why to what. Because when things don't turn out correctly in, that, the, in our thought process or when things don't turn out the way that we wanted them to. Maybe we've been praying for the resolution or the restoration of a marriage and it doesn't work out. Or we've been praying for a healing and a person we've been believing for healing passes away. Or we've been praying for a prodigal to come home and they keep rejecting God. Or, or we've been praying for an open door financially and it just seems like we just hit with another thing and another thing. We've been praying for, for our business to succeed and our business fails. How many times in the middle of those dark, tragic moments of our life do we end up asking or crying out the question why, right? God, why? Why me? And why is it always me? Why, why do things never work out for me? God, why do you help other people? And God, why does it never seem to work out right for me? And why, 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 why? We, we always want a reason for why things are difficult in our life. But what if we changed our question from why to what? God, what are you trying to show me right now? 
God, what are you trying to reveal to me right now? God, what aspect of my character should begin to change? God, what are you trying to prune out of my life? God, what are you trying to produce in my life? God, what are you doing right now? It's when we begin to change our questions from why to what that we can begin to hear what God's been trying to say to us, maybe even all along, because God's a God of process, and he's working to produce in you the life and mind of Christ. So we can pay attention to what's going on. And third lesson, real quickly, that we learned from this story with Moses is that Moses was ready to hear from God. When he got away from the distractions, when he paid attention to what was going on, he was ready to actively listen. Be ready to actively listen. When Moses heard God calling out his name, he acknowledged that he was ready. I think that's a huge word right there. Acknowledge that he was ready. Probably all the parents in the room get this. If you're a parent in the room, how many times have you called your children by name to get them to stop what they were doing to listen, right? Not if you've done that before, right? Because I don't think your children just, just wake up in the morning and they come into the living room where you're at or into the kitchen where you're at. I don't think your children walk in. Renee, correct me if I'm wrong, but have, have the children ever walked in unprompted, mind you, and said, oh, mother, I believe that you have something you want to speak to me about today. <laughs> huh? Have your children ever come in and said, I believe you have something really important you want to say. I'm going to just sit here, right here at your feet while you, while you just speak truth to me. No, most of the time, it's you or me as parents running around the house trying to find where they're at, and we're yelling their name. Like, for me, it's usually Landon. Like, Landon! Landon, where are you? Going in one room, not there. Going, Landon! Anybody seen Landon? Landon, I'm yelling, Landon! He's like, yeah. Landon, I'm sleeping. Landon, wake up. He loves his afternoon naps. But I'm yelling, Landon, and here's why. I want to tell him something, but I'm not just going to speak to the, the whole house, I want to know that he's actively listening. And I know I'm super weird on this. My children call me old-fashioned. But when I talk to somebody, I just like them to put down what they're doing and have eye contact with them. I know, I know you probably don't need that, but I do. I thrive on eye contact, right? So, so when I'm preaching and, and you're like on your phone, I feel super insecure, but I thrive on eye contact. So, so if I'm saying, Landon, I need to tell you something, I want him to put down his Xbox remote. I want him to put down his phone. I want him to look at me because I want to know that he's listening. But that's what Moses did. He says, here I am, like active listening. He put down his phone. He's like, oh my goodness, that's a burning bush. There's active listening that was going on. He was, listen- he was ready to hear from God because there's a difference between hearing and active listening. All the wives understand that, right? When I'm watching, I'll be watching the Cowboys game this afternoon, and Renee's going to be talking to me. She's going to be talking about the plans that we have for the week. She's going to be talking about what, she, what she's getting ready to do, and I'm going to be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then she's going to take the remote from my hand. She's going to turn the TV off, and she's going to say, what did I just say? And I'm going to be like, uh, that you love me? Right? There's, there's a difference between hearing and active listening. And I think that's even what the Holy Spirit's doing. Because how many times do we come Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday? And someone's up here preaching, and we're there in their seats going, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, huh And we leave, but we didn't actively listen to what the Holy Spirit was trying to say to us through his word. And maybe today, with kind of the whole of computer problems that we had at the beginning of the morning and having to flip the order of our service that we had was just one of those moments that all of a sudden we're like, oh, oh, this is different. Shock to my system. Preaching first, worship second. Like, uh, that's weird. Uh, Different. But what does God want to say in the middle of all of it? Or maybe we have active listening. God, what are you trying to say? God, I'm listening. You caught my attention. You caught my attention. Now what are you trying to say? Reminder, sometimes God might say something you don't want to hear. (laughs) Has that ever happened to you before? God might say something to you you don't want to hear. Like God told Moses in that moment, you're you're, going to go back to Egypt. 
That's not what Moses went. He, Moses was like, uh uh, I ain't going back. You got it. You, you can go find somebody else. Sometimes God might speak to you something you don't want to hear. Maybe a change in your character. Maybe a decision to go a certain way that's uncomfortable for you because it's going to stretch your faith. But active listening. Here's why I believe listening to God is a fundamental spiritual discipline that we need to have in our lives. So often, we cry out to God in a moment of desperation or a crisis moment when things are bad, right? Back to the why, God, why? We cry out to God in those tragic crisis moments. But your relationship with God was never meant to just be a life preserver that you reach out to him when you desperately need him and you're sinking. God wants to talk to you each and every day. He wants to have an active vibrant relationship, friendship with you. He created you for communion with him. It's, it's when we cry out to God only in crisis moments that only when we need a major decision made that we cry in the urgency of the moment and, and then we become confused or frustrated when God doesn't speak to us in a timely manner or God doesn't speak to us in the way that we wish. Like, hint, hint, God, make it easy. Option A is the easy one, and God doesn't do what we ask him to do, that we become confused or disillusioned, or I guess God must not love me as much as he loves other people. But it doesn't have to be that way, and that's what I want you to understand today. It doesn't have to be that way. God wants you to hear his voice on a daily basis. God wants to speak to you. So hearing from God, the key to hearing from God is not a formula. It's a growing relationship with him. i said one more time. The key to hearing from God is, is not a formula. It's not this plus this equals hearing from God. The key to hearing from God is a growing relationship with God. So is your relationship growing with God? Here's some thoughts. I sat down this week as I was working on this, and I just kind of jotted down, how does Jason hear from God? So here's, here's six thoughts that just jumped out at my head on how does Jason hear from God. Number one is know that God has created you for a close friendship with him. Just know God's created you for a close friendship with him. God didn't have to choose it this way, but he chose it this way. He chose to have a friendship with you. And friends don't become friends in silence. Friends become friends as they talk and have shared moments together. Friends become friends as shared moments develop trust and intimacy. God wants to have a friendship with you, and a friendship doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens through shared time and experiences together as you talk with your friend. And if you've ever had a friend that does all the talking, they're not a good friend, right? Because you have to talk and you have to listen. God wants to speak to you. And if I want to hear God, I have to know he's a friend that wants to talk with me. Second, as I was just kind of thinking through how does Jason hear from God, fundamentally, I know God wants to speak to me because God created me for communion with him. Second, recognize that God communicates in many ways, but most often in my mind. There's a lot of ways that God can communicate to me. I mean, I've, I've been in some beautiful sunrises where I've just been reminded of the promises of God. There's been desperate moments that I've seen God miraculously supply, and I remembered what he said to me. There's, been, there's a lot of miraculous ways that God can speak to you. Maybe through a vision, you wake up in the middle of the night, and you just had this vision, or in a moment of prayer, you had a vision. There's a lot of miraculous ways in this way. God spoke to Moses through his burning bush, and God could choose to do that. But I'm just telling you, more often than not, God is going to speak to you in your mind. And that pops up as you're reading the Bible. And as you're reading the Bible, you're starting to think, huh, that makes sense. I can see how that applies to my life right now. And the Holy Spirit, the living word, helps us to understand the written word. And all of a sudden, it makes sense in our thoughts. Or he'll, he'll begin to use... Um, um, circumstances that we're going through as we begin to think through how, what would God want me to do in this moment and we remember what God has already said to us or when we're seeking godly counsel and somebody speaks to us and it resonates in our mind and there's peace in our spirit God will communicate many different ways but more often than not God is going to speak to us in our mind and if God is going to speak to us in our mind and here's a third thought that I wrote down then my, I have to read the Bible regularly I have to let God's word 
resonate and reside inside of my mind. Since God's going to speak to me through my mind, I want to develop what the Bible calls the mind of Christ, right? If God's going to speak to me in my mind, I want to have the mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? What does that even mean? The mind of Christ simply means the ability to make the decision Jesus would have done, right? It's the original WWJD. Like, what would Jesus do? The mind of Christ. What would Jesus do here? So how do I develop the mind of Christ? Well, Paul tells us how to develop a mind of Christ in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, 2, write that down. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. What does that mean? The pattern of this world is the way of thinking of this world. Like, there's a way of thinking this world wants you to think. There's a way of thinking this culture wants you to think. There's a way of thinking this culture is saying, this is the way everybody should think. These are the norms, these are the principles, these are the practices, this is the filter, this is the value system of the world, right? And so Paul says, don't think like the world thinks. Don't have the pattern the world has. He says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? By the renewing of your mind, the mind of Christ. Right? Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. Oh, that brings us back to the very beginning of today. God, I want to hear your will. Have you ever been there before? You want to hear from God. You want to hear what God's will is. You want to hear what direction God has for you. You want to hear what God's doing. You want to hear where God's leading. Then you'll be able to hear, test and approve what God's will is. How? By changing the way I think. By renewing my mind with his word, his good, pleasing, perfect will. So one, I, I gotta remember, hey, God's created me for communion. God wants to speak to me. He's eagerly wanting to speak to me. Second, I remember more often than not, God's gonna speak to me through, his, through my thoughts, and if God's gonna speak to me through my thoughts, I gotta be sure that my thoughts are centered on the word of God. I gotta know God's word. I gotta renew my mind in God's word. Fourth, here's another thought for you. Recognize God's voice above all the other voices. I want to learn to recognize God's voice above all the other voices. What does that mean? There's a lot of voices that are crying out for our attention. Listen, there's a, a lot of blogs that you can read. There's a lot of podcasts you can listen to. There's a lot of music you can enjoy. There's a lot of celebrities telling you what's important. There's a lot of influencers that are trying to give you their value system. There's a whole cultural society and cultural norms that's trying to change the way people think. There are a lot of voices out there. And I need to learn to recognize God's voice above all of the other voices. And how do I recognize God's voice? Understand this. God will never contradict his written word. You can write that down. God will never contradict his written word. So if somebody that you follow is telling you something, put it to the test of God's word. Because God will never contradict his written word. Right? Society says that something is so special and so valuable and you should follow it and pay attention to it. Check it with the test of God's word. God will never contradict his written word. Some influencer is telling you that you should do, check it with God's word. God will never contradict his written word. So if I want to hear from God, I got to be able to recognize God's voice. And I know that God's voice will never contradict his written word. Fifth, set aside time regularly to just listen to God's voice. Set aside time regularly to listen to God's voice. I think, I think the majority, if not all of us in here, want to have a growing relationship with God. I mean, you find yourself in a church on a Sunday morning. We want to have a growing relationship with God, but how many times does that desire to have a growing relationship with God get choked out by all of those things that seem to be so pressing and urgent at the time? We, we want to have a growing relationship with God, but we hit snooze. We want to have a growing relationship with God, but we we got to run those errands. We want to have a relationship with God, but all the push notifications. We want to have a growing relationship with God, but we'll start next week, right? Can I just encourage you, if you want to hear the voice of God, set aside. Make us an appointment with you and your Bible. Set aside time. Make an appointment. Block it out. Choose to get up early. Choose to spend that lunch break, that 15-minute break, Choose it to be with God. Set, set time regularly. Make it a priority. 
to listen to God's voice. And then last, again, these, these are ways, how does Jason hear from God? And for me, find a place of regular service. Find a place of ministry, find a place of service. Position yourself in the presence of God. What is God doing and be a part of what God is doing. And God, I'll tell you how many times God has spoken to me as I've been preparing to serve. God's spoken to me as I've been preparing to minister. I'm, I'm preparing to teach a lesson, but all of a sudden I needed that more than, more than they probably needed to hear. it. Find yourself in a regular place of service. You'll find yourself positioned where God's presence is already there. Be in the places where you're positioned to hear from God. So here's my hope, church. Here's my hope for you and my hope for me is that this year would be a year that we draw close to God. What would happen? Just imagine. What would happen if there's a church full of, I'm thinking through all, all of our services today, but you know, five, six, seven hundred people that are incredibly hungry to hear from God. What would happen? Desperate to have a surrendered life, willing to hear from God, to to obey what God says and to walk in faith and obedience. So we're ready to engage with the Bible and live a surrendered life. It's desperate for more of God. Tomorrow we start 21 days of prayer. So 21 days of prayer starts tomorrow. Now I'll, I'll tell you a couple things I'm so excited about. For 21 days... Each day on our social media platforms, we're pushing out a prayer topic for the day. You'll get an email from me with our 21 days of prayer. We've been sending out text blasts and email blasts, and if you haven't been getting them, perhaps we don't have your information correctly, and we would love for you to be involved and engaged in those communication methods and just see Valerie or Pastor Chad or, or me or, or Pastor Renee after service. We wanna be sure we're communicating with you. But for 21 days, we're gonna be praying. For 21 days, we're gonna be a church that is faithful to daily pray. We're gonna be focused on prayer. At the end of 21 days, we, we have our Miracle Sunday on the 29th of January, and we're gonna talk about that in just a little bit more. But I just believe God asks us to pray, and God answers our prayers. And so on the 29th of January on a Miracle Sunday, we're gonna be asking God to answer amazing prayers that are outside of our ability to control or manufacture the outcome. Every Wednesday is our midweek prayer. Our very first midweek prayer was this last Wednesday, and we had over 40 men and women in this room that spent an hour in prayer, hungry to pray. And maybe, maybe that just freaked you out like, oh my goodness, I can barely pray for my food. How do you pray for an hour? I'll tell you, we know you thought that already. And so we have a prayer guide. So about every five minutes, it just gives you another idea, another topic just to walk through in prayer. You don't have to follow our prayer guide, but it's there to help you if you've never, if you've never spent an hour in prayer before. Just imagine the corporate prayer as a church seeks God. Just imagine what God can do with men and women who are just hungry to be in the presence of God. Hungry to pray, asking big prayers that are worthy of a big God. 21 days of prayer. I can't wait to see what God's gonna do. Let me invite you to stand with me. We're gonna go into a time of worship and, and here's what I want you to know. That burning bush as I close my eyes to pray and think through today's service, I could just see that bush still burning and God still calling. Still calling your name and your name and your name and your name. He's still calling. And maybe the next 20 minutes of worship, can I ask you to do what Moses did? 
and put away distractions and go to the mountain of God. Maybe that phone is buzzing in your back pocket. Go ahead and put it on the seat. Maybe you're still sipping on that coffee. Gulp that last lukewarm sip of coffee and put it down. Push away those distractions and go to the mountain of God. And we're going to go to the mountain of God and worship. We're going to go to where God is at in desperation. God, we need to. We have to. We want to hear from you today. Get away from distractions. Second, pay attention to what God's doing. Maybe you're walking through something right now that's a dark place in your life. Maybe it's in that moment that you can pay attention today and say, say, God, I'm going to stop asking for you to do things my way. And I want to surrender my heart. And I'm okay with whatever you want to do because I can trust your character. Pay attention to what God's doing. Even right now, how cool is it today that out of all days, God like fried our computer so that we had to like completely change the order of service so that we would get to this point that we could say, okay, God, you got my attention. I'm going to pay attention to what you're doing. And then third, be ready to actively listen. I think, I think God's already been calling you. He's been calling you. He's been calling you to a deeper commitment. He's been calling you to prayer. He's been calling you to listen. He's been calling you to hunger. He's been calling you to a personal walk. He's been calling you to more. He's been calling you to more. He's been calling you to more. And so maybe today you can just say, okay, God, I'm ready. I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to listen. God, I'm ready to listen. So get ready. Because the next 20 minutes... God just wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to you as we worship together. Just say, God, here I am. Could you say that out loud with me? Here I am. One more time. Here I am.